Hey, what is going on everybody? It is Rob with Diligent Dev and today we're going to be creating a super easy contact form using the Slack API and React. Now creating an email contact form is good, but creating a contact form with Slack webhooks is awesome. Not only is it easier than setting up an email form, but there are so many use cases for it. Like let's say for instance, you have a customer service team or a sales team. Wouldn't you want a message going to the entire team instead of just one email account? And not only that, but it's much easier just to add a team member to a workspace and channel than it is to set up an email account for them and then add them to an email group. It's just a nightmare. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go and sign up for Slack, create a workspace and create a channel. So I have my diligent dev workspace here and I have my contact form channel. Now we're going to go click on this apps right here and then we're going to click on app directory up here in the right hand corner. We're going to go to this little search bar and just type in web and you'll see incoming web hooks and we'll just click on that. Now you'll see that I already have one and so I'm just going to click edit. If you, you, you won't have one yet so you'll just click this add to slack button. So I'm going to click this edit and as you'll see there's setup instructions. All you do is you go here, you pick the channel you want to post to, it gives you your URL you can put a description with it. You, I've customized the name of mine to contact form submission and I've also given it a better looking logo than what is default. And you'll see here what a post will look like when it comes in through this webhook. If you change any of this stuff down here, you're going to want to hit save settings. So now that we have that set up, let's hop over to Visual Studio Code and we're going to set up a React app to handle the contact form submissions. Okay, so here we are in Visual Studio Code and we're gonna go ahead and create our React app. Now you can save this anywhere you'd like on your computer. For me, I'm gonna save it in my documents. So I'm gonna open up a new terminal. I'm gonna CD into my documents folder. And I'm gonna say npx create React app slack contact form. And this is gonna take a while to run. When this gets done running, I will be right back. Now that Create React App has finished, let's CD into our project by CD Slack Contact Form. And then we will run npm run start. And what this is going to do is start a development server and launch our project in the browser. So if we see here, we have our boilerplate react app that it's created for us and I'm gonna just pin that to that side of the screen and pin Visual Studio Code to this side. Alright so we'll go up here we'll open the folder that we saved it to and you'll see now that we have a project structure here. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna open up the app.css and we're just gonna wipe out everything in here. And the only thing that I'm going to put back in is just a body. And we're going to say background color and set it to a gray. And what we're going to be using is Tailwind CSS for this. And I'll put a link down in the description. This isn't going to be a tutorial over it, but it's going to give us some nice styling. So we'll head to public. We'll go to index.html and I'm going to copy their CDN link in there in the head right before the title. And I'll leave a link to this in the description. Now that we have that, let's create our contact form. So we're going to go to app.js and what we're going to do is just get rid of everything in this return statement. And we're going to set a couple constants here and we're going to be using a react hook. So let's import it here. So I will say use state. And then before I return statement, I'm going to set some constants here for our contact form. We're going to have a name, email, and a message. So let's say const name, set name equals use state. And we're just going to set it to a blank string right now. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this line. And I'm going to paste it three more times. So we've got a name, we have email. And 
and message. All right, and then we're gonna create a function right below those and we'll just say function submit form. And we'll just use this as a placeholder right now to handle the form submission. And now we need to write our JSX to display the HTML on the page. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with a root level div and we're gonna give it a class of flex. And then we're gonna have another div inside of that and we're gonna give it a class of width half and container MX auto and we'll give it a margin top of five. And let's see here, div and div. So what we need now is two text boxes and a text area. So the first thing we're gonna do is create a form and we'll give it a class of background white, shadow, we'll say medium, uh, we'll make it rounded, um, px of eight, a padding top of six, a padding bottom of let's say eight, let's give it a margin bottom of four, and we'll say self-center so it's centered in the screen. Okay, we will delete this action here. And we wanna get inside of the form. So we'll create our first field which is gonna be name and we'll create a label for it. So we'll say label and we'll give it a class of block uh, text gray. We'll say 700. Text small. Font bold. And a margin bottom of two. And we'll say this is for name. And inside of our label, we'll put name. And then we'll create an input. It will be type text. I'm gonna take the class name. I'm just gonna go ahead and paste it in and I'll put the GitHub repo in the description because it is very verbose. I will format it and then give it an ID and we'll say name. Give it a placeholder. Let's just say John Doe. Now its value is going to be name from our state above and we'll say on change and we're going to write an arrow function here. We'll say on change, we'll say set name and we'll set it to the event target and the value. And in order to do that, we need to pass that into it. So now that we have the name, let's format it and I'm gonna save it and see how it changes here on the screen. And you'll see that we have our form here and we have the name. And it doesn't seem to be centered right now. Let's see here, MX Auto. Okay, I believe now it should be centered in the screen. All right, so it looks good. Now, instead of writing out all these labels, let's just copy and paste the labels and the inputs. I'm gonna copy this and paste it down here. And we're just gonna go ahead and change some things. So we'll say this is for the email. And we'll come down here and we'll change this ID 
to email. We'll change the HTML4 on the label to email. The value to email. And we'll say set email. In there. So if we save this, now we have our name and our email fields. So what I'm going to do is paste this one more time. And forgot that again. So we'll say this is the HTML for the message. We'll say this is a text area instead of an input. And we won't self-close that. We're going to take the type out. We'll say this is for the message or the idea of message. We'll take the placeholder and put enter message here. Uh, we need to go up here to the email and change the placeholder on that as well. And we'll change the type as well too to email. And we'll change the placeholder to, let's just say email at example.com. So back down here, we've got our label for message. We'll change that to message. Got our ID of message, enter your message here. We need to change this to message. And we will set the message here. Oh. Instead of set name, we'll say set message. All right, so everything is looking good right now. We just need a button. So we'll give it a button. And for the class name of button, I'm going to paste it in again as it's very verbose. And like I said, there will be a link to the GitHub repo so you can get all of these classes that I'm using if you'd like to. Or you can go to Tailwinds and look at their documentation. So I'm going to paste in that. Go to here and say submit. And on this, we're going to put these on different lines. We'll say on click, submit form. And we're going to pass it the event. So we'll go back up to form and just pass event in there. All right, so let's save this again. And you'll see now we have our button. It doesn't do anything right now. It'll actually refresh the page and we'll take care of that in a little bit. Or actually, let's take care of it right now. So we're gonna go up here and we're gonna say e.prevent default. And what I want to do for now, just to make sure that everything is working, is we're just going to alert. And we'll do some string interpolation here. So we'll do a back tick. Say name. Email. And message. Let's save all. There we go. Ah, we didn't have our CSS saved, so the background was not the gray that I had initially put in there. So we'll say rob email at test.com and test. And we'll submit that, and we can see that our form is completely working based off of our alert that we've set up. Now that we know our form is working properly, all we have to do is wire up the Slack API webhook endpoint. So what you'll do is you'll come into Slack. You'll see this webhook URL. We're going to copy it. And in order to make our post request, we're going to import a package called Axio. So I'm going to open up another tab or add another terminal. I'm just going to say npm inst install Axios. Okay, now that we have Axios installed, I'm going to come up here and I'm just going to say const webhook URL 
and I'm going to set that equal to my webhook that I just copy and pasted out or copied out. I'm going to paste it in there. And then we're just going to say const data. And we're going to set this equal to an object with a text property. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this out of here, the string interpolation. And instead of these dashes, I'm going to put new lines. So, n, and we're going to give these labels too. So we'll say name, email, and message. And we'll put a space there and also a space back here. And we'll go ahead and get rid of this alert. So now we have our webhook URL and the data that we're gonna be sending or the payload. So we'll just say let res equal await Axios. Oh, sorry, we have to import Axios first. So we'll say import Axios from Axios. So await axios.post. And then what we're going to do is we're going to pass it the webhook URL from above. And then we're going to json.stringify our data. Now we have to do one other thing. We're going to add some configs here. So we're going to say with credentials is false. And then we have to do something with the headers. So Axios has some default headers. And what we're going to do is we're going to delete all of them. So put an arrow function here. Say delete headers post content type. And we'll just return the data. So what we're doing here is we're just deleting the header for content type. It can throw some coarse errors. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. And now I'm going to say if our, the status of our response is equal to 200, we're just going to alert that the message was sent. Else if it's not. <clears throat> we're just going to alert that there was an error. All right. So if it was sent successfully, we want to do one other thing. We're going to clear our state. So that way all the text boxes will, will clear. So we'll just put a little comment here that we're clearing state after a submission. And we'll say set name and we'll just set it to a blank string. We'll also do that with the email. And we'll do it with the message. Oh, there we go. All right, so let's save this and see if it works. Okay, what do we got it up? Oh, sorry about that. We got to do since we're doing an await call in here, we need to make this an async function. So we're going to go ahead and save this. And we'll do Rob Lewis test 12345 and then we'll just say this is a test message and let's submit it. And it's saying that it was sent successfully and we'll, we see we have a notification here and if I open that up, there it is. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial on making a super easy contact form using the Slack API and React. If you guys have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments below and uh, I'll see you guys next time.